Hi, uh, English learners. Today we're going to look at lesson 12 in book 7 of Wordly Wise. Okay, so uh, now is the time to get your book and open up to page 115. Okay, uh, now we're going to talk about the vocabulary and then I'm going to teach you how to use these words and sentences. Okay, but when we're doing the pronunciation, I'll be very careful because a few of these words have two different pronunciations, okay? So sometimes the verb and the noun have a different way to pronounce them. So it's a little bit tricky today, okay? So let's start. Uh, the first one is abduct, abduct, abode, abode, abyss, abyss, arbitrate, arbitrate, attribute, Attribute. Now, the verb is attribute, and the noun is attribute. Okay, watch the B. Attribute. Attribute. Okay, so be careful here. The verb and the noun. Okay, I'll try to talk about them later, too. Capricious. Capricious. Compromise. Compromise. Devout. Devout. Distraught. Distraught. Enlighten. Enlighten. Okay, that's another word. Okay, a little bit hard. The the verb is incline. Okay, incline. Incline. Okay. Now the noun is incline. Okay, here the stress is different. Okay, so it's not so much about uh, where the letters are and the syllables. Here it's about the 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 stress. Okay, so incline. Incline. Intervene, intervene, necessity, necessity, and two more. Orbit. Now this has a noun and a verb, but same pronunciation, okay? So we pronounce them the same. Orbit and sacred, sacred, okay? So uh, one last time, just for fun. Abduct, abode, abyss, arbitrate. Okay, uh, the verb here, attribute. An attribute. Capricious. Compromise. Devout. Distraught. Enlighten. Incline. Incline. Intervene. Necessity. Orbit. And sacred. Okay, okay so let's talk about these. Okay? Uh, now would be a good time to have a piece of paper and a pencil. Okay, So if you need to make some sentences, you can try to do that. Um, good. Number one, abduct. Okay, abduct. It basically means kidnap. Now, kidnap, you can kidnap anybody. I can be kidnapped. Okay, so you say the bad people kidnapped Daryl. Okay, um, but there's this word kid in here. So I think sometimes for adults, people will say the word abduct. Okay, abduct. It's a little bit higher level word than kidnap. Okay, but you can use kidnap for anybody. You can even say they tried to kidnap the president, okay? That's kidnap. But if you want to have a higher English vocabulary, you can use the word abduct. Now, this word, with others, is often used in a passive sentence, okay? So a passive sentence is where we have the to be verb plus the PP, the past participle. Now, the past participle is when we're talking about verbs, it's usually the third one. So, for example, go, went, gone. Okay, say, I go to school every day. I went to school yesterday. I have gone to school three times uh, this week. Now, so that gone, gone is the PP. Do, did, done. Fly, flew, flown. Okay, so this is the PP, the third one. Okay, now when we put it with the to be verb, is, am, are, was, were, will be, like that, it becomes a passive sentence. It means the boy didn't do the verb, okay? If we just say the boy danced, who danced? The boy. The boy ate pizza. Who ate the pizza? The boy. These are active sentences, okay? But when we do it with to be and pp, this person, the subject, didn't do the action, okay? So that's a quick uh, explanation of the passive, okay? Passive sentences. So here, the boy was abducted. Did he abduct himself? No. The boy was abducted by someone. Okay, someone did it. Okay, not the boy, not the subject of the sentence. Okay, so 
that's often used with this passive sentence. Okay. Grammar. Grammar is good for all of us. <laughs> Some people don't like it. Uh, abduction. Abduction is the noun. Okay. So the police prevented the abduction. Stopped. Here is abode. Abode is a fancy word. It means house. Okay. House, home, abode, residence. There's lots of words for this, okay? So, his abode was on the lonely island. Okay, his house. Abyss. Abyss does kind of two meanings. Um, one means just like a, a deep, deep hole. A hole maybe where you can't even see the bottom, okay? Maybe there's an abyss in the ocean, okay? There's an old, old movie called The Abyss. So, the monster returned to his home in the abyss. It's in a hole, hole, a hole in the ground. But sometimes the abyss can even talk about like just something really deep, but even in an abstract meaning. So we'll say his heart was an abyss. It kind of means someone with no poetry, or it's a poetic way to say someone with no emotions. Okay, his heart was an abyss, big hole in the heart. Okay. The next word is arbitrate. Arbitrate. Arbitrate is a verb. It means negotiate. Arbitrate. Negotiate. Okay. The mayor will arbitrate between the two hostile sides. Okay. So there's maybe two two groups, and they both fight along. And the mayor is going to try to fix this problem. Okay. So maybe one part of the people said, "We need a new park." And the other side said, "No, no, that land, that land. We need a new hospital." Park hospital, park hospital. The mayor will have a big meeting and then he'll try to fix this problem. Okay? So the mayor will arbitrate between the two hospital sides. So maybe the mayor, if he's smart, will build a hospital but with a park on the roof. Okay? Maybe that's the best way. Um, some trees and some grass on the roof. Okay? Anyways, the mayor will try to fix this problem. Okay? Arbitration is the noun. Okay? The noun for this. Okay? The argument between the baseball players and the team owners will go to arbitration. So maybe the baseball players, the team owners, fought a lot. Okay? They said, let's fix this problem. We want to play baseball. The owners want to make money. So they agree. Okay, let's pick a judge who will go to arbitration. And the judge will hear both sides, and the judge will pick who the winner is. Or maybe the Okay. Uh, uh, attribute, okay, the verb attribute, attribute, attribute. Okay, so attribute, again, I'm going to make a passive sentence, okay? Attribute means that you kind of like, people give the, give the reason for that, okay? So the invention of gunpowder is often attributed to China. Okay? So the invention of gunpowder, who made it? Somebody in China. Experts, historians, historians kind of research this, and they realize that China, somebody in China made gunpowder. Okay, so another passive sentence. It's a be verb with a key. Attributed. Attributed. Now, attribute. Attribute um, is something also kind of given to them. Okay, so extraordinary, extraordinary powers are an attribute of the gods. Okay, so this is something that they have. Okay, so um, I'm just gonna look quickly at the dictionary or the what the book says. Okay, so attribute says a quality or feature associated with a person or thing. Yeah, not given, but something that we think about when we think about them. So when I said here, an attribute of the gods. This god is a small god. Okay, so it means like. Zeus and Jupiter and Hades and Persephone and all the Greek and Roman gods and the Norwegian gods and all that. Okay, and usually they have some sort of power. Okay, so extraordinary powers are an attribute of the gods. Good. So when we think about them, we think about their powers. Hmm. Great. Capricious. Capricious. Um, it's an adjective. It means always changing the mind. Okay, changing one's mind. So we have to have this this collocation. Words that are often put together, okay? So he is a capricious person. Capricious weather. It means it's 
It rains, it stops, it rains, it stops, and the weather can't make up its mind. Capricious decision. Okay? So usually if someone makes a decision, you think, oh, that's done. But then they change their mind, and again, and again. And we'll say this, you know, maybe someone's like, ah, I don't want to go to the movies. I don't want to go to the movies. I don't want to go to the movies. Let's go to the movies. And we're like, oh, that was a very capricious decision. Switching back and forth, okay? On the fence. Capricious. There's also a noun, capriciousness, okay? Okay. Uh, murder. Compromise. Compromise. Okay. Um, means you meet in the middle. If two sides are fighting, like with the mayor in the park in the hotel, um, two sides are fighting, maybe they try to meet in the middle. Okay? So if I, if I say to you, oh, do you like my phone? I'll sell it to you. 500 bucks. And then you say, no, 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 $100. And then I say, no, that's too cheap. It's a wonderful phone. $400. And then you say, 200 And then we meet at $250. Sold! Here's my phone. We compromised, okay? Originally, I wanted $500, but you only wanted to pay $100. So we met in the middle. We compromised, okay? So compromise means that one person wants this one, one person wants this one, but they meet in the middle, okay? If you have an arbitrator, uh, they will help you compromise. We compromised, okay? In this case, it's both people who were arguing is inside the we. Or if you want to do it with two things, two people, one after and before the verb, A compromise with B. I compromise with my sister. Okay, maybe I share a car with my sister, but I want to use it. And I say to it with my sister, okay, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I get the car. And then my sister can have the car Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. And Sunday, anybody can have the car. This is a good Now, the verb for compromise, uh, oh, I just said that now. That was a good compromise. Now, a verb uh, has a second meaning, okay, for compromise. Compromise here it means that you make something weaker or make something into a, into a worse position, okay? So if you're guarding the castle, okay, but 10 people have to go away from the wall, you now compromise the castle. You've made the protection weaker. Okay, so compromise. Um, sometimes if you take a medicine, it will compromise your body. Okay, the medicine may be fixing one part of your body, but it makes the other part of your body weaker. Okay, so we say this compromises his health. Okay, make the situation worse. Okay? So we usually use this compromise the situation, compromise the reputation. Okay, in a restaurant has a good reputation. If we do something bad and food's not really good, we say this. This was a bad decision. It compromised our reputation. The restaurant, people think less of the restaurant. Compromise our position. Bad position. Okay, and the noun is So here, both sides, both sides honored the compromise. Okay, so here, honored means they keep the compromise. So if my sister starts driving the car on Mondays, which is my day, she's not honoring the compromise. Okay? But if I drive the car Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and my sister drives the car Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, then we both honor the compromise. Okay, okay devout. Devout means really, really religious. Okay? Someone who goes to church or the temple or the mosque a lot. Okay? Praise a lot. Someone who's always talking about religion. Okay, so this is a devout person or a religious person, and even a harder word you can say a pious person. Pious. Okay. Now all of these you can put in ly. Okay, devoutly, piously, religiously. Okay. So he devoutly slept to his bed. Ah, this is a secondary meaning. Okay? This is not about religion. It means he really, really honored um, his diet. So even maybe he goes to a birthday party, and they're like, cake, just a piece of cake. It will not hurt your diet. And then the person's like, no, 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 I am sticking to my diet. So he devoutly stuck to his diet, okay? almost like a religion. 
So here, I think the book says sincere, sincerely st stuck to it. But this means like strictly stuck to his doctrine, okay? Strictly. So pious. You can also say pious. The priest was very pious. Um, the minister was very devout. Um, the imam was very religious. Okay? So they all mean the same. This one means strictly, okay? Or completely. Distraught! Oh my goodness! Distraught means you can't control it. Even if someone's trying to calm you down, you're crying and you're crying and you're crying, and someone's like, it's okay, it's okay, but that doesn't help. You keep crying and crying and crying. This is distraught. Okay? So we usually say distraught when or distraught by. So she was distraught when her brother died. Crying and crying for days. Okay, of course, brother died. Okay, um, distraught by an event, some sort of event. Okay, so you put distraught is with when and by. It's not a happy word. Enlighten. Sometimes it just means kind of teach somebody, or at least share information with somebody. Okay, it means basically give them light, give them knowledge. Okay? The teacher enlightened us on the history of Europe. Okay, so maybe people didn't know about Europe, and then people, you know, the teacher talked about kings and wars and all that kind of stuff, okay? So shared information with them. Now, enlightened, you say he is enlightened, it usually means he has kind of modern thinking, okay? Um, the book has kind of a weird definition for enlightened. So enlightened here says, free from ignorance or prejudice. Um, that's okay. The daycare center takes an enlightened approach to early childhood education. It probably means here, this sentence means that um, the daycare center, you know, mixes boys and girls, but also white people with black people and all this kind of stuff. Um, that's okay with enlightened, but enlightened is more usually about wisdom, okay? Um, so if we, said, we said, you know, he's very enlightened. It usually means that he's very smart and has a lot of wisdom, has thought about lots of the topics and stuff like that, okay? Okay, next page. Okay, incline, right? Okay. So, at one point it means just kind of like not up and down, okay? Not uh, vertical, but more like this, okay? So, the lean tower of Pisa inclines to the right. Okay, the top of it kind of goes that way. Is that, maybe your right is that way. The video always confuses me, okay? Uh, inclined to the right, okay? Inclined to the right. Um, she is inclined to believe him. Now, this is obviously different meaning. This means likely to do, okay? So she is inclined to believe him. She's likely to believe him. Usually everything he says, she believes, okay? okay? The teacher is likely to believe the students. The teacher is inclined to believe the students, okay? Um, inclined, maybe a good possibility that this will happen, okay? Now, a third verb meaning is incline your head. Almost always your head. Sometimes they'll say your waist. Incline your torso, your upper body part. Incline your head and incline your torso like this. Like bowing, okay? Incline. Now, the noun is an incline, okay? Incline. So the truck slipped down the incline of the snow okay so there's a hill okay so slip down the incline uh intervene intervenes means you stop something a third person maybe two people fighting fight 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 and then another person gets in the middle you go there you go there this is intervening okay so it can happen maybe if there's uh two countries and it looks like they're gonna have a war Maybe another country will intervene, okay? They'll try to stop it. They're like, this war doesn't make sense. Stop your fighting. Stop your fighting. This is called intervening. Intervening. You get in the middle of a fight. Okay? So the third dad intervened in a fight too late. Those kids were crying and bloody. Okay? So maybe if the dad intervened two minutes earlier, nobody would be crying and bloody. So maybe the two, the, two, the two kids were fighting like this. And the dad is like, stop it, stop it, but bleeding and crying and stuff like that. So the dad should have intervened earlier. Okay, an intervention is a noun. So Ted's family had an intervention with Ted to try and stop his drug addiction. 
Maybe? This one's more serious meaning. Well, both are serious. But this is also a very serious meaning. Okay? This stop his drug addiction. Maybe they see his path forward. They see him going lower and lower and lower. And they're trying to stop that. Okay? So just like you're trying to stop a fight, you're trying to stop this pattern. And Ted taking drugs, taking drugs, taking drugs, and they want to stop it. So he stops taking drugs, okay? His life is getting worse and worse and worse. This is called an intervention. So in both of these, you're trying to stop a bad thing. Okay. Um, necessity. It means something you need. Okay. Necessity. Is a necessity when good shoes are. I have to change this is to are. Good shoes are a necessity when you run. Good shoes are a necessity for running. Okay, so you can do any of this is a necessity when you something for running like this. Okay, so if you do a, a verb here, you need verb ing. Okay, a comfortable bed is a necessity for sleeping when you sleep. Okay. Necessity. Okay, we have two more words. Orbit. Orbit is a verb and a noun. Okay, orbit. It means the path around something. An invisible path, okay? So a Neptune orbit is a long 165 years. So when Neptune orbits the sun one time, Earth has orbited the sun 165 times, okay? And Mar or sorry, and Mercury and Venus will even have more years, okay? So um, Neptune is very slow going around around the sun. Okay. And then Earth, Earth orbits the sun. So here is the subject, is the next word, this orbit is the verb. Okay? Earth orbits the sun every 365 days. This is a little bit wrong. 365.24 days or something like that. Okay? So it's a little bit more. That's why we have a leap here. So yeah, almost kind of roughly 365 days. I think the Earth goes around the sun. It's like 96 million kilometers or something like that. It's a long path, but the Earth does it in 365 days. Right, so here's the noun. Neptune's orbit is, that's the verb. Earth orbits, that's the verb, okay? Last word, sacred. Sacred, it just means a holy, usually for a holy place or a holy book or something like that, okay? So it's say a sacred book or a sacred place, okay? Taishan is a sacred mountain in China. Okay, I think it's in the Shandong province of China. Okay, kind of like the peninsula that's pointing, pointing towards Korea. Um, so this is a sacred mountain. So people try to go there in their lifetime. Okay, so sacred mountain, sacred book, sacred temple, sacred church, even sacred song. Okay, and another adjective. Okay, um, his job is sacred to him. It means he really, really, really respects it and really, really thinks it's important, okay? Like he's sick, he still goes there, he goes there on the weekends, he does his job perfectly, okay? His job is sacred to him. Okay, okay. Those are all the words. If you need my help, let me know. You can comment in the boxes below and study for the test, okay? Take care, bye-bye.